We're not talking about punching a time clock and working nine to five. We're talking about working around the clock, rain or shine, hot or cold, because crops and animals won't wait. Jimmy knows all about it because he lives it. And Jimmy knows what you're going through because he goes through it too. He's here to talk about it. It's seed and feed, chemicals and compost, vaccinations and irrigation. It's time for Today in Ag with Jimmy Clark. Hey, good day to all you great stewards of the land. It is the day in ag with Jimmy Clark, brought to you by the First National Bank and Trust of Elk City and Sarah America. Happy Wednesday, everybody. Uh, nice day out there. It's a little breezy, not too bad, but anyway, uh, get ready. According to all the weather experts tomorrow afternoon, here she goes again. Uh, latest forecast, three to five inches in western Oklahoma, so... And the eastern Texas panhandle, so here we go again. We'll take it. Never say no to rain, even though we might not need it. But anyway, it's pretty wet out there right now. I'm I'm liking it. Let's take out some temperatures in our state. 64 degrees at Hollis, 64 at Bessie, 61 at Woodward, 56 at Beaver. Out here at uh, Boyce City, it's 39 degrees. And... Uh, out here in the panhandle of Texas, 64 at Wellington, 60 at Miami, 67 at Odell, and 59 at Lipscomb. So there you have it. Well, elections are over, finally. I'm glad. I'm tired of the bad-mouthing. Just, uh, just tired of it. Just, uh, you know, uh, not only just the candidates, it's just people on social media and you know, the, the red-blue thing going on. It's over. Hopefully, your candidate that you vote for uh, won. And if not, there's always next time. But anyway, so we, it looks like we got a new president be coming into office here in a few weeks. Or not a few weeks, but a few months here, January 20th. So uh, uh, hopefully between now and then or as soon as he gets in, we get a farm bill because I think that's the most important thing. Uh, we'll see who he picks for Ag Secretary. Uh, lots of things coming up in the next couple of months with all the everything changing. So we'll, we'll see what's going on. So I got a question for you, you guys. You know, I don't like talking about politics, but here's a question I got for you. And if you feel like it, I'd appreciate it if you did. Text in. Uh, your thoughts on how do you think the ag secretary that we have now, uh, Tom Belsack, how do you think he did overall in the last four years? I mean, I know there was a lot of money spent through the Department of Agriculture, and I mean, boo of it, lots of it. Uh, but, uh, you know, what are your thoughts? 580-225-9697. Your thoughts on how our Ag Secretary for the last four years has done. And I know there's a, a lot of T's to be crossed and I's to be dotted with that question. But just an overall view. What do you think? Uh, I think I see somebody brought it up, a friend of mine on social media here a couple months ago about... You know, farmers have did the best under this administration than they did under the Trump administration. And then some farmers did uh, really good under Obama. And I look back and what I found out that is I don't think it it doesn't matter whether it's Republican or Democrat for the last, oh, since 2000, 2004, I believe that uh, the uh, farmers had a couple of good years and a couple of bad years in each administration. So, uh, you know, we had, a, of course, uh, President Biden took over during the uh, ongoing COVID deal and lots of bills were passed and lots of money was given out and relief and this and that and stuff like that. But then the last two years, We've had, uh, you know, high interest rates, very high inputs, 
And again, the cattle market is as good as it's been in a long time, but that's it. Uh, you know, uh, overall uh, inputs and crop prices have not been great. One year they was, a couple years they wasn't. So anyway, it's it's like it's a toss up. So uh, I guess that's why they call it farming and ranching, huh? So anyway, give me your thoughts on that, if you don't mind. Uh, don't have to be long winded about it. Short, sweet, two two five nine six nine seven. I don't care if you're listening in Beaver or Slap Out. Give me your thoughts. Let me let me share it with our listeners. No names. I won't mention any names, but I just like to hear your thoughts on that. All right. Let's see what happened in our big world of agriculture overnight. If I can find it, where did it go? Oh, bear with me a second here. It disappeared on me. Oh, there we go. Let me find it here real quick. Why did that disappear on me right when I needed it? Okay, let's see here. Where is it at? Huh. Well, my bad. I don't know what happened. Oh, uh, here we go. I found it. It was hit. It was hit. It was hit. All right, here's what happened in our big world of agriculture overnight, not agriculture. Anyway, soybeans, corn, and wheat futures plunge in overnight trading after Donald Trump was again elected president of the U.S., raising concerns about tariffs he's threatened to impose, even though he hasn't done it. Trump, who secured more than 270 electrical, electoral college votes, uh, needed to defeat to current vice president Kamala Harris has said he plans to impose widespread and stiff tariffs on imported goods, which would likely trigger a trade war. The future and former president has said he will impose a 10% tariff on imported goods and an additional 60% tariff on Chinese imports in a bid to boost manufacturing in the United States. China is the world's largest importer of soybeans. Other countries would no doubt retaliate and enact tariffs or other measures on U.S. goods, making it more difficult to export items, including agriculture products. Economists from the National Corn Growers Association and American Soybean Association said in an October 15th report that corn and soybeans, which compose about a quarter of ag exports from the U.S., are prime targets for tariffs. China already imposes tariffs on U.S. goods, but has a waiver for certain items, said in a report which was commissioned by the NCGA and the ASA uh, and done by the World Agriculture, Economic, and Environmental Services. If the Asian nation were to ca cancel those waivers and impose it, uh, its tariffs, soybean exports to China may fall by 14 to 16 million metric tons annually. That's a 52% debt decline from baseline projections in years where the waivers have been revoked. The report said corn imports by China likely would fall about about 2.2 oh, million tons annually, an average decline of 84.84% from baseline forecast. Brazil would likely be the beneficiary of the trade war between the U.S. and China. Soybean futures for January deli delivery dropped 17 and a half cents to 984 and a quarter a bushel overnight on the Chicago Board of Trade. Soy mill was down 570 to 293.80 a short ton. And soy oil gained 17.17 cents to 45.16 cents a pound. Corn futures lost two cents to 4.16 and a half a bushel. Wheat futures for December delivery declined eight cents to 5.64 and a half on the Chicago Board of Trade. Kansas City dropped eight and a half to 5.68 and a quarter a bushel. So again, Donald Trump was again elected president of the United States in a comeback that returns him to the White House. The associate, the AP early this morning declared Trump the victor, anticipating he'll end up with 277 electoral college votes versus 224 for current Vice President Kamala Harris. Trump won the usual Midwestern states, including Iowa, Nebraska, Kansas, Missouri, and Oklahoma, amongst others, while Kansas, uh, Harris took Minnesota and Illinois. 
Wisconsin and Pennsylvania, important swing states, went to Trump, sealing the victory. The f- former and future president won in the 2016 before be- being defeated in 2020. J.D. Vance, 40 years old of Ohio, will become the v- vice president after winning this f- his first election two years ago. How about that? The pharmacy's calling me during my show. How about that? Strong storms continue to rumble through the Midwest this morning, moving east through parts of Missouri, Arkansas, and Illinois, according to the National Weather Service maps. Flood warnings are in effect for several counties in Arkansas, Missouri, and Illinois. River and aerial flooding will linger through the day in southern Missouri. According to the National Weather Service, some rivers are still in moderate to major flood stages. Counties in in the Oklahoma and Texas Panhandle are under winter weather. I'm sorry, it's just Oklahoma weather just cracks me up. Counties in Oklahoma and Texas Panhandles are under a winter storm watch, while much in New Mexico and parts of Colorado near the Texas and Colorado borders are facing uh, winter storm warnings. In northeastern Colorado, between 3 and 12 inches of snow are expected today into Thursday. Winds are forecast to gust up to 40 miles an hour and blowing snow will reduce visibility. How about that? Well, hey, today is the Taylor Ranch happy hour all day. And I got a six-pack of Taylor Ranch premium beef sweet barbecue seasoned beef snack sticks to give away here. And here's the question. You'll have to uh, you might have to look this up. I'm going to give you I'm going to make it a question and uh, or a multiple choice question. So what is the number one export destination for U.S. beef? Japan, Mexico, or South Korea? Second, second, yeah, second person to get it right, you get a free six-pack of sweet barbecue seasoned beef sticks, snack sticks from the Taylor Ranch. They're really good, too. Uh, They've got three choices out there. Original, the sweet barbecue seasoned beef snack snack sticks, and then they got the jalapeno with cheese in it, and they're all really good. I've had them all. So anyway, the question is, which is the number one export destination for U.S. beef? Japan, Mexico, South Korea? What's your answer? Anyway, we'll be right back after this Taylor Ranch break. The Day in Ag with Jimmy Clark. It helps to work with someone who's been down the same road you're traveling. Someone who knows what you're up against and what you're going through. When it comes to farmers and ranchers, that's us. That's who we are. Our lenders know ag inside and out because we're producers too. We approach it like a partnership. We want to put ag producers in position to be successful. We're very laid back and easy to deal with. And people seem to like that. We think you'll like it too. I'm Marty Maddox. Great Plains Bank in Elk City is here to lend farmers and ranchers a helping hand. Member FDIC. This is the Elk City Livestock Auction Market Report for Friday, November 1st. 2,564 head were sold. Four head of steers at 440 brought 307. 15 at 491 brought 297. Three at 537 brought 284. 10 at 628 brought 252. Four at 665 brought 230. Eight at 668 brought 264. 13 at 802 brought 202. Three head of heifers at 430 brought 265. 22 at 535 brought 272. Six at at 565 brought 233 10 at 637 brought 237 15 at 768 brought 213 4 at 723 brought 205 butcher cows were 30 to 139 butcher bulls brought 92 to 145 bred cows were 1100 to 2200 pairs brought 2125 to 2200 elk city livestock auction 3202 south highway 6 sale every friday at 9 a.m to consign call brandon hickey 580-497-6095 harvest equipment tires need to hold up to long hours different soil conditions and lots of road time firestone harvest tires are built to keep up they offer better traction less soil compaction better fuel use and they're puncture resistant 
Blair Tire and Feed keeps a bunch of Firestone Harvest tires in stock. Their inventory is huge. And when you need infield service, they guarantee to get there. If you're stuck in the middle of nowhere, they'll find you and get you moving again. Blair Tire and Feed at Highway 283 and 19 in Blair, Oklahoma. From pump to pivot, Valley Water experts can provide efficient turnkey pumping solutions for large or small operations. From identifying a source to remote management, Valley Water experts have you covered with the most efficient and cost-effective solutions for all your water management challenges. Contact your local Valley dealer, Knutson Irrigation, 1-800-373-9325 or online at KnutsonIrrigation.com. That's Knutson Irrigation, 1-800-373-9325 or online at KnutsonIrrigation.com. We do a ton of wholesale work with your mechanic shops, but it's also the DIY guy that has Saturday afternoon off. He comes in Saturday morning, picks up his stuff, and, and works on his pickup. It's a wide range of people. It can vary from the biggest shop in town to the smallest shop in town to your guy that works in his garage on the weekend. We try our best not to tell the customer no, but to find what they need. Napa Auto Parts of Elk City, 716 West 3rd. More parts for more cars. When it comes time to put your hard-earned money toward a new vehicle, count on Lipscomb dealerships to give you a better value and car buying experience with friendly, no-pressure sales and quality service backed by a half-century of experience. Save more in the country at our seven dealerships across Texoma with over 1,000 Chevy, Buick, GMC, Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, Ram, and Ford vehicles, plus KTMs and Can-Ams, always on sale at LipscombDealerships.com. Good people, great deals, family-owned since 1979. Oh, Jimmy's all wound up and ready to go. Here comes more of Today in Ag with Jimmy Clark. All right, welcome back. All right. While it's hot on my brain to, to announce the merit at Watonga football game has been moved. Where was that at? Where is that at? Oh, there we go. It says, hey, Jimmy, can you announce the merit versus Watonga football game at Watonga has been moved to Thursday night due to the prediction, uh, predicted severe weather on Friday? So, and so remember that. Uh, also be on ParagonTV.com and while I'm talking about it football big elk football elk city be out there seeing those boomers up there in Woodward anyway uh, 7 o'clock elk city will be playing Woodward Friday night as of right now and you can also watch it on big elk TV well basketball season's here and this Friday night, November 8th, Hammond at Sentinel, Sweetwater at Leedy, Canute at Eric. And this will all be on Paragon TV. Uh, this Friday night, November 8th, Hammond at Sentinel, Sweetwater at Leedy, and Canute at Eric. You can watch it all right there on Paragon TV. Okay, let's check out some weather out here, some ag weather that is out here in Texas. Panhandle. 65 degrees at Wellington. Humidity is 45. Dew points 43. The winds are out of the south at 9 miles an hour. Wind gusts up 12. Peak wind gusts so far today, 19 miles an hour. Month to date, precipitation, 3.28 inches of rain. How about that? And it's only the 6th of November. Anyway, 8 inch soil temperature, 60 degrees. Boy, that'll rain cool that ground down, but it's still in good shape. We're still in way better shape than we would. Okay, let's check out the Lipscomb dealerships grain market update. It's uh, it's all over the place today. I've been watching it just out of curiosity. I know one thing, the Dow and the NASDAQ and S&P all have reacted very well. Let's check out what the grains are doing. Uh, got a big old yellow jacket flying around here in the studio that ain't good uh december corn 428 up five and three quarters march 437 up five and a quarter soybeans for november 992 down one january 1001 down a half soybean mill december 297.20 down 230 that's the lowest i've ever seen it since i started doing the show period January 298 down 260. Soybean oil December 4631 up 132. Hard red winter wheat recovered a little bit from this morning at nine. 
Oh, well, it was about 9.30. It was down quite a bit. But December, hard red winter wheat, 5.76, down a half now. March, same thing, down a half at 5.88. Cotton, uh, didn't look like the presidential election affected you guys much. December, 69.81, down 14. And December, West Texas Intermediate Crude Oil, 71.96, down 3 cents. Natural gas is back up at uh, 279 or 277. It's up about 10 for December. Uh, the uh, Dow right now is up 13.72. That was at 11.07, and the uh, S and P's up 123, and Nasdaq's up 458. According to that, let's check out our cattle markets right quick. Live cattle for December 185.07. Up 30, February 186.47, up 52. Feeder cattle for November 247.25, up 110. January 243.40, up 105. Lean hogs, December 81.45, up 32. How about that? So, not too bad. It looked way worse this morning. So, it, it's recovering a little bit here. All right, let's see what happened in the... At Beaver yesterday, quite a, quite, there we go. I, I, man, I need to call them guys up there. Me and his report, uh, the way it is, is, is not cool. Let me check this deal out. Here we go. All right, let me scroll all the way back down. Okay, looks like they had 4,889 head, 4,219 cal, uh, calves and yearlings, 670 cows, the heifers, bred heifers, were bringing anywhere from fourteen or twelve ninety one up to eighteen fifty, and they were all weighing anywhere from seven forty five to uh, eight eighteen. And then we got bulls. Let's see here, what do I got going on here? Bulls, yeah, there we go. Uh, bull calves, one hundred sixty nine head, average weight four ninety one, average price two sixty seven ninety one, brought thirteen hundred fifteen dollars per head all right you guys bear with me a second here bulls this my beaver stockyard reports going haywire on me here bulls they had uh 63 head slaughter bulls i'm talking about here 63 head 1313 was average price uh 1935 66 per head cows here we go Oh man, me and this report are not getting along very well right now. I got whoop back up. Okay, here we go. There was 576 cows sold. Average weight 11.39. Average price 122.59 per hundred weight. 13.96 uh, 57 per head. All right, here we got heifer calves. I need the calves. Come on. You ever had one of those reports just keeps moving on you even though you're not moving the mouse? Here we go. Heifer calves, 956 head, average weight 528, average price 266.95, 14.10 per head. Heifer yearlings, 730 head, average weight 645, average price 249.66, 161096 a head. All right, let's see here. Uh steer calves i'm there the mouse is acting better now it, it's a report but i'm figuring it out uh steer calves 952 head average weight 570 average price 287.98 per hundred weight 1641.16 per head steer yearlings 1437 head average weight 733 average price 258.32 per hundred weight 18.94.26 per head. How about that? Good, good price. Good price. Now let's see if I can exit that screen. I'm out of it. I'm done. There we go. So coming up uh, tomorrow, I'm going to have a special guest in here tomorrow, and he's going to be talking about the inaugural Cattleman's Ball coming up, and Boots O'Neill. He's going to be on the show tomorrow. I'm excited. Joe's going to, uh, Merrick's going to come in and help me keep him under control. But I was reading the uh, uh, story on him 
from the Texas Cowboy Hall of Fame. And I just want to share this with you a little bit. So you get to know Boots a little bit. Boots O'Neill was born in 1932 in Clarendon, Texas. Started breaking horse for small ranches in 1947. He has spent more than 75 years in the saddle working for some of the largest ranches in West Texas. Boots was a, a initiated into cowboying when he went to work as a young boy for the R.O. Ranch. He and his brother, Wes O'Neill, broke 20 broncs for $20 a head. From there, he went to the J.A. Ranch where he stayed at the chuck wagon and lived in a TP. He also spent time working at the Matador Ranch and the Wagner Ranch. From 1953 to 1955, I did not know this about him, and I'm glad I read this story on him today. From 53 to 55, Boots served in the United States Army. He worked in the demilitarized zone between North and South Korea on the 38th parallel. He was trained as a demolition expert. He says that this was the longest time he's ever went without riding a horse. I'm going to ask him if he's ever threw some dynamite and stuff off his horses while he was in Texas. <laughs> but anyway, we'll see how that goes. After he was discharged, Boots went to work as a field inspector for the Texas and Southwest Cattle Raisers Association. However, the lure of the cowboy life beckoned him back to the Wagner Ranch in Vernon, Texas. He stayed there for almost 20 years and was eventually promoted to foreman of cattle operations. Boots is currently employed by the Four Sixes Ranch at Guthrie, Texas. He has been involved in all phases of their cattle work for more than 30 years. He also holds a Texas Peace Officers Commission and in the past he has assisted with security of the ranch. Boots has received the All-Around Cowboy Award at the Lazy E Arena here in Guthrie, Oklahoma, and uh, in an All-State Ranch Rodeo in 1985, the Working Ranch Cowboy Award during the Texas Cowboy Reunion in Samford, Texas in 2004, the Trailblazer uh, Award during the Texas Rack Rodeo held in Wichita Falls, hope I said that right, in 2005, the Point Man Award for Chisholm Trail Heritage Center in Warica, Oklahoma in 2010, and the Chester A. Reynolds Award at the National Cowboy and Western Heritage Museum in Oklahoma City in 2013. So, you know, we're going to have us a real cowboy on here tomorrow. How about that? Well, let's go ahead and take a Taylor Ranch break. I still need some more answers. <laughs> you guys don't use Google, do you? <laughs> anyway, the question is, and I did multiple choice. <laughs> the question is, oh, my phone went dead here. My brain's always a deal here. The question is, what is the number one export destination for USB? Japan, Mexico, or South Korea? South Korea, huh? All right. 580-225-9698. Also, I got a few people that shared their thoughts on uh, what the uh, current Ag Secretary, USDA uh, Secretary, uh, how do you think, what do you rate them? How do you rate them as uh, how they did their job the last... Uh, Almost four years now. Will be four years next month or in January. So uh, um, don't be a basher. I just need some legitimate thoughts to uh, share with the uh, listeners. Be right back after this. The Day in Ag with Jimmy Clark. Yeah, farmers can be pretty tough. Oil field companies, they need it as long as we give them a fair price. They let's go. Farmers, they're pretty tough because it, it's a hard world in farm, you know, in the farming market. It's it's tough, so they're going to do all they can to get the best deal they can, and we're going to give it to them. Everything for maintenance on your equipment, changing your oils. You need some antifreeze. You need some hydraulic oil. Any kind of grease. We got the bolts and fasteners now. We're opening up electrical fittings, zip ties, penetrating oils. You know, windshield washers, all your shop towels, hand wash stuff, you know, any type of stuff like that. Anything for like a maintenance shop or something like that where you're doing maintenance work. Just getting everything else that we can to make us a one-stop shop. And if we don't have it there, we're going to get it for you somehow or another. And it's not going to take two weeks to get it. Camrock is the name of the company. 
It's 2111 South Main, Elk City, south of Fred's Steakhouse. I'm Ronnie Red, myself, Brock Calc, and uh, Casey Miller are your owners at Camrock. Three local guys just looking to do business with our community. Alignment is very important. I mean, it causes the wear on your tires. So if you just let it go, the tires, instead of saying a 60,000 miles, will only last 30 or 40,000. It's called tow. It's where the tires are pigeon towed. They're turned in, they're turned out. One may be one way, one may be the other. We always shake down the front end to make sure there's no loose parts because our roads are so nice and smooth out here <laughs> that they do get some parts that wear out a little quicker. Uneven wear, edge wear, and shaking. Rough roads, potholes, constructions, and riding in the country. It all is tough on your vehicle. We have a gentleman who's been here nearly 11 years. Very knowledgeable, knows what's going on. We probably average five alignments a day. It's something, that honestly, needs to probably be done every year. L&R Tire, 1204 South Main, Elk City, Oklahoma. The home of Bridgestone Firestone Tires. At l Tire, we'll take good care of your vehicle. Hey, cotton farmers, are you walking in high cotton? Ah! It's easier than you think. Have your cotton gin fast and efficiently at Western Planters Cotton Gin in Hobart, Oklahoma. Bet you didn't know they have the largest gin in the state and the connections to get top dollar on your investment. They're located at the corner of Highway 9 and Highway 183, just north of Hobart. Be sure and check them out online. WesternPlantersCottonGin.com are you often wondering just how much extra nutrition to feed your cattle? Kent Watkins here, owner of SEI Agritech in Elk City. A useful tool to help you know just how much to feed this winter is the Oklahoma Mesonet Cattle Comfort Advisor, a great way to help protect your herd from the brutal winter weather. Let us help you with your winter feed needs. We offer bulk or buy the bag maxi gain or range max cattle cubes. That's SEI Agritech on South Randall in Elk City. I think every customer wants to be treated like they're the only customer. They want to be treated with respect. At First National Bank, every customer is important to us. Every customer does matter to us. And we try to treat each customer with respect and humanity. It doesn't matter if you have $2 million or $2. You're treated the same with respect and honesty. I'm Tammy DeGarmo, and I help make the difference at First National Bank and Trust of Elk City and Sayre. Member FDIC. He loves to talk about farming and ranching. Here's more of Today in Ag with Jimmy Clark. Awesome. Uh, everybody, Cam Rock down there on South Main, right there on the south side of uh, Fred's. They're a new sponsor for the show because I'm excited. I ordered some bolt bins from them the other day. Anyway, uh, anyway, I'm excited. They're, they're coming on as a sponsor of the show. So more about them coming up uh, later on. I just I heard the ad and I was like, hey, whoa, whoa, we've got that going on. Anyway, I'm excited. All right, let's check out some ag weather up in northwestern Oklahoma. Uh, let's go. I already picked Buffalo, but let's go out to Boyce uh, City or Kenton. Let's go to Kenton and see what's happening winter weather-wise out there. Woo, yeah. Anyway, currently it's 41 degrees. Feels like it's 32. Dew point's 32. The humidity 71. The winds are out at north-northwest at 18 miles an hour. 10-day rain total, 1.26 inches of rain. 3-day average, 4-inch bare soil temperature, 50 degrees. Sunset at 550, mostly cloudy and 41 today with winds out of the north, 21 to 22 with wind gusts up to 30. Snow showers tonight with a low of 28, 90% chance. And Thursday, 90% chance of rain and snow, 37 degrees. And uh, winds are out of the north, 16 to 18 tomorrow, wind gusts up 25. <laughs> it's coming people i don't know when it's coming here but it's getting closer how about that all right let's go to the text line anyway the i have a winner and i i have text the winner so if you didn't get a text from me uh then you you weren't the winner anyway the correct answer to the uh question of who's the uh number one export goes to beef goes to what country it's south korea uh, finally, some people started rattling it off in there. But anyway, I got a winner. 
And so somebody texted in, I don't know how to Google. <laughs> so anyway, so here's one of the answers, uh, one of the quotes. Uh, with the exception of the EID mandates, I believe Secretary Velsack has done a fine job. I believe what we are going to see forward is less government interference and more freedom in our farms and ranchers, but the trade-off for this will be less subsidies as the new administration will try to get our national deficit back under control. That is an awesome answer. And then I had another one here. Hang on with me. Yes, we got PPP money, but the government took it all back, plus some with higher inputs, higher cost of living, and high interest rates. We would not we would not have survived another three and a half years of on on agriculture unless a change was made. So, there, very good. Thank you guys for your you're more than welcome to bring it on in. I still got twenty minutes left in the show. My question was, how do you guys think that our current agriculture ag agriculture secretary did the last three point? eight year uh, years 3.8 years almost four years now so anyway and then that person that needs to learn how to google you must have a flip phone i was guessing right <laughs> anyway i was just making fun of you anyway so we have a winner of the taylor ranch sweet barbecue season and also i want to share with you places that you guys because today is the taylor ranch happy hour so i'm going to share with you uh where you guys can pick up those sticks so far it's all new on the market here in elk city george creek market there on the uh south randall the sei agritech there hey by the way i was in there uh day before yesterday was or was it, it might have been yesterday and they have uh, a lot of beef uh raised uh or cut up and ready uh for sale in there by the steak by the hamburger patties whatever in uh their freezer so anyway i seen it stock and they got some of the best chips potato chips whether it's uh tortilla or just regular potato chips they got some of the best chips i got like i don't know six or eight bags at home now anyway dips in some homemade salsa mm, just good all right george creek market the dugout la donna's wine and spirits and lnr tire here in elk city and in cheyenne johnny max smith ag center and martin's trading post in weatherford they have it at it's all about moi or moe however you say that i'm not familiar with that place in weatherford i thought i knew all the places in weatherford i guess i don't anyway that's places you you can pick up a taylor ranch uh Man, they must have an emergency with my pharmacy because they're calling me back again. Anyway, during the show. Anyway, Taylor Ranch, premium beef sticks. And also, you can order beef from Taylor Ranch. Quarters, halves, holes from them by getting a hold of Mr. Jimmy Taylor out there at the Taylor Ranch. So, anyway. All right, let's check out some more. Uh, uh, Neil, this come from... Uh, I like equipment, so I'm going to share this with you on uh, from Machine Repeat. I got a couple things I'm going to share for, from you on from him today. So anyway, Machine Repeat, how used row crop tractor values shifted from 2023 to 2024. Digging into his data, the average auction prices for Case IH Magnum 290 and John Deere 8285R tractors are both down 34 percent from last year uh, according to this right here from pete he says in uh 2023 a case ih magnum 290 was 136,121 dollars this year it's 89,000 dollars the john deere 8285r was 156,000 dollars last year this year it's just a few thousand above a hundred thousand so a case a 2013 Case IH Magnum 290 tractor with 3,013 hours on it sold for $90,000 in, in an October farm auction in Union City, Oklahoma. That's an interesting sale price for many reasons. I started wondering how that compares to the trend line of the Magnum 290 tractor values, which we made from 2011 to 2013. 
it turns out the price is almost exactly spot on. The current average auction price on the model through late October this year, $89,830. That felt pretty far below where it was not too long ago. So using the average pricing option on machinerypeat.com, I found the price tanked 34% from last year's $136,000. Uh, average, which was the highest average auction price on that model in 10 years. When I posted these find, findings across our machine repeat social media outlets, follower Zach Zandy asked Pete, can you do a comparison for a John Deere same year and horsepower? He said, yes, sir. You bet I can. That's what Pete does for a living. So the comparable John Deere model is the 8285R, which has a average auction price through late October of $103,000 and two hundred three two ninety four, a lot of folks on social media latched on to that that thirteen thousand dollars difference between red and green. I'm obviously, but Sugar Daddy was on there somewhere. But mine went down uh, another path. It seemed like that that was also down quite a bit. Bingo, Pete says, it was down exactly 34% from last year's average auction price on John Deere's 8285Rs of 156000 similar to the pattern seen with the Magnum 290s. Last year's average auction price on the John Deere 8285Rs was the highest in nine years. Well, according to Pete, it's not that simple. Some folks said it's good to see used tractor values finally recalibrating downward from the nosebleed heights of the late 2020 through early 2023. One follower commented on my post about falling used combine prices or values, saying it shows that the work that the Fed has doing to control inflation is working. Personally, I find that argument that used farm equipment values are driven by higher purely by inflation. Yes, inflation is an important part, but not nearly as important as other market forces, according to Pete. From 21 to 22, we've seen historically low levels of used inventory on dealers' lots as manufacturers struggled to meet demand. And of course, there was the years of very strong farm income. But I always loved about 35 years, what I've always loved about 35 years of compiling auction data on equipment has been its, its brutal honesty. Sometimes it's way up, sometimes it's way down. It can turn on a dime like it did in November 2007 when the, when the ethanol push exploded, commodity prices took off, and auction sale prices on farms, used farm equipment skyrocketed. Timing is everything. In March of 2023, a John Deere 8285R with 1,225 hours on it tied a record price selling for $250,000 in New York. A year and a half later, a 8285R with 1,853 hours on it sold for $188,000 in Lone Tree, Iowa. That was then. This is now. Let's take a break. Taylor Wrench break. We'll be right back after this. The Day in Ag with Jimmy Clark. When you get off work, how do you feel on your drive home? Everybody's glad to head home after 8 or 10 or 12 hours on the job. But do you feel like you and the crew did good work and made things happen and helped move a project forward? Or are you just thankful it's over and you don't want to think about it at all? Nobody should feel that way. At Canyon, you won't. Canyon Oil Field Services is hiring day and night drivers for their Fay, Hinton, and Chickasha locations. And they need mechanics in Elk City and Fay. Excellent pay and full benefits will be yours. Apply at Canyon's Elk City office on Highway 6, a mile and a half south of the golf course. Or go online to canyonoilfield.com. You can even call 729-3297. When your shift is done at Canyon, you'll know you've done good work. And when you go back, you'll do even more. At Canyon Oilfield Services, the key word is service. 
Life insurance and annuity products offered through Farm Bureau Life Insurance Company. Property and casualty products are offered through Oklahoma Farm Bureau Mutual Insurance and affiliated companies. I was impressed that he came to my barn. That is what I like is service. Service says a lot. I have not even been to his office. My time is very valuable to me. I'm very busy. It's a 35-minute drive from my house to Mangum. I don't want to drive down there every time I need something. That's going to kill at least two hours of my day, and I don't have that kind of time to, to spare. So when I get in business with somebody like this that gives me that kind of service, I respect the job that they're doing, and I appreciate the service that they're providing to me. I'm ecstatic. I'm very glad. I, it worked out like it was supposed to. You know, I, I don't think I could have picked a, a better insurance agent. My name is Bandy Silk. My family and I farm and ranch in the Delhi community. I'm a fifth-generation farmer and rancher. I'm glad I've contacted Mickey Lively for my insurance needs. Hi, I'm Mickey Lively. I'm an insurance agent with Oklahoma Farm Bureau. My office is located in Greer County. Call me anytime at 580-782-3827. Do you love the great outdoors? Maybe you enjoy trap shooting or skeet shooting, or maybe getting some target practice in at the firing range is your thing. If you're that person, you love guns. Hobart Farm and Garden has a whole room dedicated to guns, gun safes, ammunition, and more. It's quite impressive. You gotta go check it out. They are Western Oklahoma's Platinum Browning Dealer and Glock Stocking Dealer. They're located at 1030 South Monroe in Hobart, Oklahoma. If they don't have it, you don't need it. Hobart Farm and Garden. Is your cattle mineral investment being washed away? Weather can cause conventional mineral to absorb water and blow away. Simply put, your cows probably aren't eating it. That's why Purina created Wind and Rain Storm Mineral, a weatherized mineral that can stand up to the elements. Its larger particle size makes it harder to blow away and easier for water to pass through it. Keep money in your pocket. Contact Farmers Union Co-op of Elk City today. Hey, farmers and ranchers, it's time to make your life easier with an easy haul hay trailer from Everett's Welding in Visay, Oklahoma. These trailers are designed to haul multiple hay bales as quickly and efficiently as possible, keeping more money in your pocket. It'll pay for itself over time and make your life easier. What a deal. See all they have to offer at everettwelding.com. Be sure and check out their ads in the Penny News. Now, back to more of Today in Act with Jimmy Clark. So I went and put those beef sticks up front so the winner could come claim their prize. And anyway, I had this, the boss come walking down the hallway saying he smelt coffee burning. Anyway, he gave me a brainstorm. You know, I want to be like Blake Shelton, like on The Voice. He drinks vodka while he's listening to people sing. I think I need to drink vodka or whiskey while I'm doing the show, I think it'd be a lot funner. <laughs> he 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 wasn't impressed with my ideal. So anyway, Martha, Oklahoma, here's your Hobart Farm and Garden Ag Weather update for southwestern Oklahoma. 68 degrees right now. 50 is the dew point. 52 is the humidity. The winds are out of the southeast at 17 miles an hour with wind gusts up to 23. 10 day rain total almost four inches. Three-day average four-inch bare soil temperature, 64 degrees. Sunset at 539. Sunny and 71 today. Tonight, clear 46. And tomorrow, 64 for a high and 60% chance of rain showers. You guys get the sandbags filled up today and tomorrow. You're going to need them tomorrow night with three to five inches of rain coming to western Oklahoma and the eastern Texas Panhandle. So anyway, speaking of the person that responded on, uh, uh, where is that deal? Uh, about how Secretary of Agriculture Tom Valsack did. Valsack, Valsack, however you say his name. Anyway, uh, he said something about the EID ear tag rule that Brandon and I mentioned again yesterday. Well, the American Livestock Markets and Dealers Association identifies numerous issues already, even as the group takes the issue to the court. Uh, they're trying to delay the EID uh, ear tag rule. Anyway, the American Livestock Markets and Dealers Association, a national association serving livestock markets, order buyers, dealers, and professional livestock marketers throughout the U.S. has formally requested the USDA's Animal and Plant Health Inspection Service to delay the enforcement of the final rule. The use of the EID uh, 
Ear tags are official identification in cattle and bison AT, ADT rule. In November 4th, letter to the USDA, they requested that the implementation or, or enforcement of the ADT rule be delayed at least 180 days to ensure the USDA, the state health officials, veterinarians, tag manufacturers, and the entire industry are fully prepared support the ADT rule in the way that does not reduce industry traceability, slow speed of commerce, and increase costs for livestock markets and dealers. Working alongside livestock market dealers, order buyers, veterinarians, and state health officials has identified already a number of issues with the implementation plan and has communicated this to USDA officials in September. So, Huh. It's not out of the news yet. I'll keep you up to date if I see any more on this. Uh, so anyway, it's still being dragged around. I do 100% agree with what Brandon said yesterday. I usually don't disagree with him. I just like to hear what he says. But this particular deal he spotted on yesterday, who is going to pay for it down the road? So the next time you see your favorite U.S. representative or senator... Or if you run into Mr. Trump somewhere, ask him who's going to pay for this once this money runs out that's already been set aside for it. That's something that you, we need to figure out. I, I agree uh, 100%. Uh, downside to the election yesterday, we lost two people. Uh, the Republicans lost two people on uh, the Ag Committee. The House and Senate Ag Committees will see changes to the membership this upcoming session after at least two incumbent committee members, New York Representative Marcus Malero, Monalero, I guess, and Ohio Senator Sherrod Brown were not re-elected. So they were members of the Ag Committee. So they won't be back on there. As of 8 a.m. Wednesday, those races are the only current losses for incumbents on either House or Senate Ag Committees. Through many of the races have been considered toss-ups heading into Election Day. Uh, Republican John uh, Durant or Doretti of California, who uh, currently leads his opponent 51 to 49. That's still in deal. And then uh, Republican Lori Durammer trails her opponent. Not by much. They still got a lot more votes to count. Also in Colorado, Democratic Carrero of Colorado leads her opponent. So anyway, lots else going on with that stuff. All right. Enough about that. Uh, where is I wanted to talk to the okay here's how you bid on a charity tractor to raise money for hurricane victims this is pistol Pete's or pistol Pete <laughs> machinery Pete's pick of the week pistol Pete and Mike Gundy aren't very popular this week so anyway uh, machinery Pete shares about a special Alice Chandler's 8070 to be auctioned off November 9th here in about three days and all the money will go to uh, the uh, Hurricane Helene's at Blue Ridge Mountains. Uh, so anyway, it's a pretty cool deal. It's a, what is a, let's see here. It's got 9,332 operating hours, like new rear tires. And you can get on uh, Justice Farm and Construction Equipment Auction in Lewisburg. North Carolina to bid on that. It's a really cool tractor. There's no money coming off of it in any way. Uh, so they've set up uh, lots of proxy bid where you can contribute if you don't want to buy the tractor. So my question on bringing up the Alice, I know that Newcombs had uh, a couple of four-wheel drive Alice Chandler's four-wheel drives. But man, it seems like back in the 80s, I, I, I remember maybe in the 90s, I remember some more people in western Oklahoma having those Alice Chandler's four-wheel drive tractors. Somebody help me out with that? 580-225-9697. I know there was, like I said, a couple of them. And anyway, that's a pretty cool looking. Those snub nose on those Alice were pretty cool. But anyway, uh, I just remember some more people around western Oklahoma having those tractors. So anyway, that's Got her going there. Let's see here. Uh, they had uh, a rare 
uh, machinery Pete, not pistol Pete, had a rare John Deere 4620 factory front wheel assist, sold for 75000 bucks. The previous record was 46000 and then a 7520 four wheel drive John Deere with 3,566 hours on it, sold for 45000 That's a new record. How about all that? Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed the show today. It's Today in Ag with Jimmy Clark, brought to you by the First National Bank and Trust of Elk City in Sarah, Oklahoma. God bless. We'll see you tomorrow.